Hello, I'm Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil. And I wanted to talk today a bit about some of the new features in V7, uh, specifically related to subdies. Um, if you've done any subd work before, this will all seem familiar. But if you haven't, and you're looking at the new features and trying to decide how to get started, uh, this will be good information as to, as to how to approach a project. Basically, what you want to look at with a subd project is how do I break this up into individual little squares? And in this case, the project that we're going to build today is this is this hand model, which is really organic, which would be difficult to build in NURBS if you've ever tried to build one in NURBS. You can see how you know how you know how difficult it is. And <clears throat> and I want to show you how simple this is actually in subdies. And so what I did here is I actually threw my hand onto a scanner, and uh, and broke it up into logical square little pieces. The way that I always try to teach people uh, how to think about sub-D projects is how would you build this thing if all you could do was build it out of post-it notes? Now, granted, these post-it notes are, are slightly different shapes and, and things like that, but they're all basically rectangular four-sided shapes and they're connected at the edges. And so if you look at this, the, the way that we have this broken down is um, started with the fingers basically right and and so we started with one four-sided shape right here another four-sided shape right here another one here and another one here and that basically was the building blocks for the rest of this model right these four shapes and so what I've done is I took the the image, and I find this is useful. Is if you if you start with the image and then just draw where you think your topology, right? The layout of these things is is referred to as the topology um, of of the part itself. And if you look here, uh, we have three sections for the fingers, which correspond to to each joint um, in each finger, right? And then the same thing with the thumb, and then We've added um, a couple of additional shapes or quads down here to make up the top part of the hand, the middle part of the hand, the bottom part, and you can see how it all <clears throat> relates together. And so uh, what I want to do is is walk you through the the basic construction of this and and show how this all relates and then and then get an end result here pretty quickly. So, Let's um, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to drop the opacity on this image by just going to the properties and drop this a little bit so that we can actually work over it. And then I'm going to lock this image layer so that we can work on top of it. And the the we're going to just start here in the sub D menu and we're going to start with a primitive and we're going to start with a 3D face. And it doesn't matter which quad you start with. Um, I'm going to actually start with this one. And you'll notice as I place the points that it gives me this oval shape, right? And if I right click to accept, this isn't necessarily what I want, but this is the smooth sub D, right? So we're going to hit the tab key and you can see that it actually changes to the, the underlying quad or the unsmoothed version of this. And if I turn on the points, you can see where the points line up. I can grab them and just simply drag them to exactly where I want them to be. And in this case, we're going to do our original layout all in this, this non-smooth, or we like to refer to it as box mode. right? So we've got our original quad here, and that's, that's what we're going to build the entire rest of the part on. And we can use Gumball if I shift Control click and grab an edge. I can actually gumball this next quad out and then use the manipulators to get the shape that I want. Again, shift control click on an edge, sub object selection. I'm going to pull this out and then drag the points to the places that I want. And I'm going to do this again. to get the top part of the hand. And that is my first row of quads. Now, 
To get the second row of quads, I can shift control click all of these edges using gumball. I can extrude all of these down and then just very quickly go in and pull the points into shape. Same thing again, shift control click all of these edges, drag the gumball down. And I'm going to do a gumball trick here where if I click on this active edge and scale it to zero, it's going to flatten everything out. And then I'm going to just pull this in, put this over where I want it to be. I missed a little bit on this one, so I'm going to adjust it. I'm working in the top view, so I'm keeping everything pretty well organized in the top view. Pull this up here. That one goes over there. And we've got our palm pretty much laid out. So I'm going to continue shift control click on an edge. I'm going to drag this one out. And you can see how simple this is when you break it down in this quad, shift control click and drag out again. We're just laying out, and I like to call this the paper doll. So you're going to hear me refer to this a lot in, in uh, the coming months as we do more of these videos. That basically this is, imagine that you're building a flat paper doll, right? Now, if I shift control click all of these edges and I extrude them up, you can see they all come up together and they're connected, and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift control click two of them, and I'm going to extrude those up using Gumball. Make my adjustments. And then I'm going to shift control click these other ones, and I'm going to drag those up. And you can see now, as I've done this, it gives me the separation that I'm looking for. Now, this is an extremely powerful technique, even though it's really, really simple and it's really easy to understand. It, and in the fact that you can basically do this with anything, anything that you can see the side view of or, or a top view or a plan view, you can, you can do this technique, um, this paper doll layout. If you remember any of the stuff that I used to do for T-splines, um, all of that same mentality applies because T-splines was also a sub D modeler. So um, all of that knowledge that you built learning T splines is applies is, is ap applicable here. Or Maya or Moto or anything else if you've ever done any sub D work. It's all kind of the same stuff. Our model our modeling system is based on Catmull Clark, so it's a pretty industry standard system. And it works really well. All right, so here's our layout. Um, I'm going to do a few little adjustments here just to get a little bit closer to my reference. And that is basically all there is to it as far as a layout. I may adjust this just a little bit. In, in box mode or, or non-smooth mode or, or subdivision zero or however you want to refer to it, the goal is to go as simple as possible. You don't want to add any additional information that you don't need because we can always add information later. Now you can take it away as well but the goal is to is to be as absolute simple as possible. So if I go to perspective view and I want to start adding some three dimensions to this, I'm actually going to drag the entire model and I'm going to actually I'm going to pick this uh, so that I get the 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 object level, right? So you can see that my extrude handle shows up and I'm going to just extrude this up a little bit and you can see that I now get a 3D shape. Now the cool thing about this is all I have to do to see my smoothed object is hit the tab key and all of a sudden we've got a smooth organic shape. Now the back 
is missing, right? Because it, it extruded that up and, and made the back missing. So we're going to use a different command called reflect. We're going to pick this sub D. We're going to set the reflection plane here. And then we're going to click on this side to keep and right click. And you can see that it now completes the shape and gives us our full model. Now, reflect is cool because if I do something over here, I can modify this, right? You'll see that it doesn't, it's not like mirror, it's not like it, it updates in real time. But if I run the reflect command again, it updates. So if I want to mirror it, I can by running the reflect command again. If I don't want to, then I don't have to. All right, so let's let's pick this and go to front view and scale this a little bit, right? I'm going to go a little bit thinner here. And then start doing a little bit of sculpting. And if we go to the top view, and if we go to wireframe, we can start dragging this around. And this is a good time to talk about selection filters. If you look at the, if I start, if I just type selection filter into the command line, you'll, you can see that all of the different selection filters start to pop up. There's select and, selection filter edges, faces, none, filter toggle, and vertices. This is all very useful for sub-D modeling because if I pick vertices, you can see that all I can pick if I drag the model are the vertices. And that's really useful. If I shut that off and I go to faces, all I can do is pick the faces. Pick are the edges. If I'm set to vertices, it's picking the vertices on the edge on the object. And if I'm set just to faces, it's picking just the faces of the object. So this is really useful for editing. And in this case, I'm probably going to get set to vertices. Now, you can actually go through and hotkey this stuff. And I have that done here if you look at my aliases. Um, I have this set up for, um, for selection filter edges right here, selection filter faces, and then selection filter surfaces I have set up somewhere. I think it's probably down here. Um, I know it's in here somewhere. Yeah. I have it set up to vertices down here with VV. So I have I have VV set up for vertices, I have FF set up for faces, and I have EE set up for edges. And so that allows us to very quickly go through here. And if I hit EE enter, you can see that it turns on my edges, right? So that allows me to pick just the edges. And that's really useful because when I'm editing, I can just grab an edge, I can drag it around, and I don't have to worry about grabbing anything else that may or may not give me what I want for my model. So I can start pulling around in here and start to more closely capture my shape of my original reference data. And it's just like pulling taffy. You can just drag this around and pull it around and do whatever you want to do with it. It's really useful. Now you can see that the thumb has a little indentation right here, which we're not capturing yet. And we can always add that later. So right now I'm just going to try and focus on getting the roughest shapes where I want them to be by dragging this. Now, the bottom of the hand is not open, right? It goes into the wrist. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to switch this to faces by using my FF hotkey. And I'm going to grab these faces right here. Actually, I'm going to delete them. And you can see that what that does is when it deletes it, it opens the end of this model and gives me the ability to be able to extrude this edge down into a wrist. All right, so if we delete things, it makes a hole. We can always fill that hole later, but that's a way to make a hole in a sub D once you have it. <clears throat> so let's continue with our with our edges. I'm going to go E E Enter. Again, that's my hotkey. That's not the way Rhino's default setup, but that's my hotkey. You can set your own. 
You won't hurt my feelings much if you don't use mine. I mean a little, I mean let's be honest, but not much. Alright, so let's keep pulling. And again, see this is just we want to be simple, right? We don't want to we don't want to overcomplicate this or add more data, right? The I, the goal is to is to put just enough data in there to get your shape, and if you've got too much, we want to get rid of it. And I'll show you. We'll do a little bit of refinement on this. I don't want to I don't want this to turn into a two hour long video, but we'll do a little bit of refinement on this, and I'll show you um, some of the additional things that you can do here. But I just wanted to, the basic idea I wanted to get across here is this paper doll layout. Start simple. Lay it out flat. Lay it out simply with as few quads as possible. And then go from there. And we can just pull it into shape. and we've got our basic shape for our hand. Now, what if we wanted to add a little bit more detail to this? Because of the way we laid out the topology, if you look at the palm of your hand, right, this, these faces up here are a little bit, right, these faces up here are a little bit puffy. So let's do that. Let's just pull them up a little bit, see how we can just add that little puff, right? And then the center part of your hand this part is a little bit sunken in so let's pull that in. let's pull that down a little bit and then this part of your hand is a little bit puffy so let's pull that up you see how you can start to get that that shape and then at least on mine if I go to edges this row of edges is also a little bit puffy. And you can see the difference between pulling an edge and pulling a face. See how I pulled the edge and it pulled everything up? I'm going to go to vertices now and I'm going to pull this back down. And that gives me a little bit of that puff shape, right? See that? Now this is not going to be a master's class in sculpting a hand, I can tell you that right now. But what I do want to show is just how simple it is to just get these little shapes to start to happen. Now, we talked a little bit about, um, if I go back to the top view, <clears throat> about things like, see how this is not quite capturing the shape. Now, just like a curve, right, if I turn the points on for this thing, let me pick the entire object, and let's get if I pick the entire object and I turn the points on, you can see that the structure on a sub D is just a three-dimensional version of the same way that a curve is built. So if I do a point here, a point here, a point here, and a point here, I get a very similar shape to my curve, right? So each one of these corresponding points is very similar to what you're already doing in a curve. Now what would you need to do in order to get this to sink in on a curve? You would need to edit, insert a control point, right? And so if I insert a control point here, that's going to give me additional data where I can pull that shape, right? That's exactly what I want to do. And so here, I'm going to instead go to the sub -E toolbar. I'm going to insert an edge, and I'm going to do that right here. And I want to insert the whole loop. And so I'm just going to pull an edge up into here. So it gives me an additional edge. I'm going to set my selection filter to edges again. And then I'm just going to pull that in. I'm going to pull this back out. I'm going to pull this over a little bit to get that shape, and then I'm going to pull this out to get that. See, now we've got our shape. We just added it a little bit of additional detail. So let's take that a little bit further. Let's go and 
for the time being, I'm going to roll over to the back of this thing. What would we do if we wanted to add a fingernail of some sort? I'm going to shut my selection filter off at this point. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to bring this back and I'm going to go to faces. And I'm going to pick <clears throat> this face. Do, 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 do. Just this one. Let's see. I'm going to go to shaded mode. I'm going to pick this face. And I'm going to grab the extrude icon and I'm going to pull up just a little bit. And you can see what that does is that actually extrudes, if I were to keep going, you can see that it extrudes a face. Now the cool thing about this is this face now, I can shift drag and scale this thing and I can extrude it up one more time and then I can scale it down and it gives me a little fingernail. And I can grab all of this, shift drag, scale it down. I can rotate it just a little bit and then I can use this directional waffle and I can take this and I can tuck it in just a little bit and then I can grab this edge and I can pull this out a little bit and then I can take this edge and I can tuck it under and then take this one and pull it up you can see I actually created a little fingernail there see that? Maybe I need to thicken it just a little bit, like that. Maybe I need to pull this one over a little bit in order to get the quick there, but simply shown, we can actually create a little fingernail there. Maybe that's not the greatest shape, but again, this isn't necessarily going to be a master's class in sculpting, but what I wanted to do was just show the possibilities of what we're what we're available here hopefully to get you started to get you thinking about this to get you thinking about how do I lay these things out now the the one more thing that I want to do the fingers are kind of cylindrical shaped and that's not really what we're looking for fingers don't normally look like that so I'm going to actually add a few more edges I'm going to pull this up like that and then I'm going to do it again and then I'm going to use the slide edge, which is here, and I'm going to pull these a little closer together. And then I'm going to grab this edge and I'm going to scale it a little bit. And I'm going to grab this edge. I'm, sh I'm control shift clicking on that, by the way. And then I'm shift dragging on the scale handle. And you can see that I can start to get the knuckle shape in there. Maybe this is a little, maybe that's a little big. You can see that additional info gives me the ability to be able to control this shape a little bit better, right? So the subtleties of subdies and the sculpting of the subdies is what you're kind of going for. Now, don't like it? Sh control shift click, double click to select the entire edge and delete, and it goes away. Double click, delete, double click, delete, it goes away. So it's really flexible. You can, you can add or, or delete stuff at any time. But I think that's about as far as I'm going to go in this point. Um, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want this to turn into a really long video. But what I wanted to do was basically present the concept of paper doll, present the concept of laying something out with quads, and then adding and subtracting a little bit of information to, to hopefully get you started down your path. For I hope that gives you what you need to, to begin to play with subdies. We're going to do more of these in the future. But uh, I hope this concept of paper doll and laying out something very simply and flat and then bending it into shape and moving it into shape is, uh, is super useful. Oh, one more thing I did want to show. Um, we can pose this by using... Um, some of our sub some of our our uh, universal deformers. So, like, say for instance, if I wanted to bend this finger up, I can actually select those faces and use the bend command, and I can actually start posing these fingers.
There we go. Okay, so we can start to get some realism into this hand by just bending it and adding the, some posing for the fingers. All right, so that's about as far as I'm going to go today. So um, Paper Doll, if I shut this off, you can see it starts very simply with these quads. Start with a single quad and just extrude your shapes and then thicken it by extruding, reflect it, add some, add some thickness to it or some volume to it, and then start adding and subtracting edges, um, slide edges to move them around, all things like that. All right. Hopefully that gives you what you needed to get started with a little bit of sub D work. Uh, we're going to be doing more of these in the future. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Kyle Houchins, and this is Getting Started with Sub Ds. Thanks.